Hi folks, my name's Ashley, I'm one of the founders of Skira and I'm here today to show you some of the new things in Construct 3 release 302. Yes, we've crossed the 300 releases mark and we put out a blog post recently just uh, celebrating that, summarising some of the things we've done in the past 100 releases and hinting at a couple of things that might come in future. Uh, so take a look, uh, there will be a link to that in the video description. Another thing, just in case you missed it, we've also announced a uh, beta of a whole new product, Construct Animate, designed for animation. Uh, it's still in public beta, but if you want to give it a go, you can visit animate.construct.net slash beta. I'll just give you a really super quick uh, example of this. Uh, here's one of our demo projects, which is an animated splash. And you can see at the bottom there's the timeline, and when you play the timeline, uh, it previews the animation. And it also includes a couple of new export options, including exporting to a video file and exporting an image sequence. You might also notice the timeline bar down here looks different. Uh, it's had quite a big overhaul. All these changes to the timeline bar are also in this release of Construct 3. So uh, this applies to both products. And uh, you can see it looks different. There's been various usability improvements. And uh, give it a go if you haven't played with the timeline bar for a while. There's lots of changes and many improvements. Let's go back to Construct 3 now. So I'm just going to close these tabs and here we go. The first thing I'm going to mention uh, in this release is that there's now support for supporting the .c3p file extension with Construct 3. So you might have noticed in the past that Construct projects are a .c3p file. And the key to getting this to open directly in Construct is to first use the install as app option, uh, which also appears in the ma main menu and a couple of other places. This just says beta because I record these videos before the uh, main release goes out. So once you install Construct 3 uh, as an app, it will appear like this and you can see the address bar has disappeared. And now if I close this window, I can double click on one of these project files and it will open directly in Construct. And you can see uh, Chrome is prompting uh, to verify that you want to do this. If you just check that box, it won't ask you again. And then when you click Open, the project file opens directly in Construct. Uh, so this wasn't uh, previously possible. Um, it's a nice convenience feature. It's supported in Chrome and Microsoft Edge, and hopefully we'll see support for that uh, in other browsers in future. This leads me to my next point, which is the, uh, the venerable 8-direction behavior has a new feature. It's called Allow Sliding, and you can find it in the properties here. Now, if I preview this project, and I'll show you the way it worked previously. This is with Allow Sliding Off, and when you run into an angled solid, uh, you'll notice the movement just stops. Now, by popular demand, we've added an option to allow sliding, and this changes the handling of collisions when you move against a solid. And you can see now the movement will move along, sliding along the solid, and it creates a more sort of fluid movement that might be more suitable for your kind of game. So that's now an option you can use uh, for extra options for your eight direction behaviors. Next up, there have been some improvements for the effects in Construct as well. I'm just going to double click that project file again to open it, and you can see this time there was not a prompt. Once the project opens, I've just got a sprite here with two effects on it. There's adjust HSL and warp object. And a new feature is there are now enabled checkboxes for these effects. So in the editor, you can now enable and disable them individually. There's also a is enabled condition that's been added. If I just go to the event sheet, there's also another improvement for the effect system is that when you use set effect parameter, there's now autocomplete for the effect names on the object. So this makes it a fair bit easier just to make sure you can set effect parameters and uh, use effects in event sheets. Now, one last thing which I'll cover in this video is the uh, improvements to the debugger. So I'm just going to open the Space Blaster example project here, and I'll go to the title screen and I'll start the debugger. And I'll just slightly resize the window. And you can see on the bottom left here, there are now uh, hide unused as a checkbox here. 
So on the title screen, most of the project objects don't exist. And if I click hide unused, that will just instantly filter the list down so that any objects with no instances don't appear in the object list. Uh, objects which apply to the entire project, like keyboard and, and touch, still appear, uh, but you can see the list has come down significantly. Another option is there is the uh, search box, so you can type in the name of an object and it will filter down the list here so you can quickly find what you're looking for. So those are two useful improvements for the debugger. Uh, that's all I'm going to cover in this video. As ever, there have been loads more changes. Uh, if you check out all the intervening release notes on the releases page, you'll see everything that we've changed. And uh, we hope you enjoy using Construct. Thanks.